Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to Wednesday night. Wednesday night, it's Fish Talk Live night here on June 19th. We're on episode number 34. We have a guest host tonight, Mr. Chris Team from Aquadariums in Fairhope, Alabama. He's going to be showing us about Paladarium tonight. It's going to be an awesome show. Now's the time to share this out. Go ahead and share this out in your groups. Let's see if we can get up to 100. Earlier today, I sent out a uh, blast on the Ron Cichlids, and um, we're trying to see if we can get that 100 today. Um, so go ahead and share this out, everybody. It's going to be an awesome show tonight. we got a lot of cool stuff to show you. I think we worked out some things like Ron says. I don't like to jinx it, though. So this would be great if uh, any of the Ron Demers uh, moderators can share this onto his page. going on everybody fish talk live tonight on wednesday this is june 19th with episode number 34 with our guest mr chris deans from aqua Dairy. all right everybody. all right let's get this started up Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to Wednesday night's version of Fish Talk Live. What's going on? Dave Gould here, everybody. And we've got an awesome show tonight. So if this is your first time to Fish Talk Live, Fish Talk Live is a live gamified social media show designed specifically for the fish keeping and aquarium hobby. Uh, we are, uh, the show is centered around Ron Cichlids, which is a... Uh, Ron Cichlids is an African cichlid breeder out of West Palm Beach. Now, normally we have Ron uh, Demers online with us uh, as our host, but he's been having taking some time off, uh, and we have a guest host tonight. His name is Mr. Chris Deems. Chris Team, this is what he looks like right here. Uh, Chris Deems, uh, Chris Team is uh, the owner of Rockwoodariums. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm having an audio problem. He's the... Anyway, he's the owner of Aquadariums. He's also uh, was the manager at the reptile, uh, the alligator farm here in Foley, Alabama. So that was a picture of him cleaning out a big old massive tank. Uh, anyway, so uh, without further ado, I'd just like to bring him on. Mr. Chris Team, here he is. What's going hey, on, everybody. Chris? What's up, hey, bud? Hey, everybody. Like he said, my name's Chris Team. I'm the proud owner of Aquadariums. Super excited to be back for week two on my two-part series on paludarium so got a lot in store i hope y'all are going to enjoy please don't hesitate to ask questions at the end of it i know this is a very new uh topic to even a lot of the aquarium people so uh, happy to answer as many questions as i can for y'all awesome so uh who are we seeing online i'm having a really tough time i'm not sure if there's if anybody's even watching this show i'm trying to find it here um my phone's now blowing up. So who do you see anybody? Uh, let's see. Normally, that's what we do is we do our shout outs, but I can't even find the show. Um, not sure what's going on. <laughs> hey, I'm going to pull this up. You know, one of the cool things about Chris team is uh, his uh, conservationism. I love your post, Chris. So when you post about Appreciate plastics it. in the oceans and particularly when animals are um, going extinct and you 
I, I get real, a lot of education from that. I found this video and it kind of reminded me of you. So I'm going to play that while I try to sort out this issue. You can comment on it. Yeah. Is that a comic cichlid uh, trying to host right there in the beer can? Yeah, yeah. So this is this video is actually it is awful. This video is actually from Costa Rica. Uh, so you'll see it. This little convict will jam in there. Don't go inside. Look at that thing. Go. Yeah, look at it. Huh? Wild. Also notice all the leaf litter there on the on the floor. Yeah, because it looked like a cigarette butt in there, too. Yeah. Anyway, that's just kind of horrible. You know, it's part of what's been going on in our world that, you know, we're not taking care of our oceans with the amount of plastics in there. We're not taking care of the animals. Uh, you know, it's not... That but true. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm still looking for the live. I can't find it. Anyway, so here's a message to any of the moderators that might be on. I haven't really heard from anyone tonight. So um, if you can share this out into the groups, make sure it's on Ron Cichlid's page. It never got out there last week, and that was a big kind of bummer. I can't tell how many people are on. I don't know if anybody's on. Uh, my iPad is just not cooperating. I'm, I'm not seeing anything on my iPhone here myself. Yeah, let, well, let's, let me find it so I can make sure people are even on the show. I usually, usually I have like four or five people that are helping out and talk, giving us, um, giving me feedback, but I'm not really getting that either. So. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just want to go ahead and give yeah. you a big shout out, Dave, because I've, yeah. I've seen the back end that you do, yeah. and it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this man, for those of y'all who uh, watch the show, he literally puts in about eight to 10 hours just making one episode. And yeah. like last week, I got to see all the behind the scenes and it's crazy how much stuff he's got going on. Uh, it looks like one screen for y'all, but this man's got four in front of him. So it's uh, yeah. very fast paced. Uh, so a lot of respect and for what uh, you do there. Dude. I appreciate that, man. I And I love what you do. I mean, we can sit here and banter back and forth <laughs> until I can get... Uh, there's some sort of like uh, new moon or something. Let's talk about that because communication has been horrible today across all platforms, all clients, everything. And I've been getting the crazy comments from people. Like uh, it's almost like they're like, y they ask something and I give a really direct answer and they're like, duh, what? Like, you know, almost <laughs> everybody, you know, sometimes that happens. The fact that I have one ear right here out and it's crackling is like cutting me out too. So I got to kind of try to figure out how to get that. I just thought that was a new style for headphones. Yeah. Yeah. So I still don't even see the live. I, I'm, I'm looking all over the page. I don't see it. So I'm, I'm not even sure if we are live, bro. Um, why and how this would make this so difficult and impossible for me. What's that song, Bad Moon on the Rise? <laughs> okay, so everything shows streaming. All my streaming servers say they're streaming. I go to Fish Talk Live page, and it's not streaming. So I don't think it's actually streaming right now. I, I uh, Let me double check. I got one last thing, because I changed that for our test. Do you remember? Yeah. So we can start this up here in a second. Let's Take see. it from ground zero. Yeah, I honestly don't think it's streaming. So Tuesday. Dashboard. Yeah, it's not streaming. So we started the show. And uh, let's, let's go to round two here. So let's stop this. All right. Settings. So that was. We're starting the stream. is funny. Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to Tuesday Fish Talk Live. Uh, we're running about 
eight minutes behind because I've been streaming on a completely different page. <laughs> so we're like ten min we're like ten minutes into the show and I'm like, hey, I don't see anybody. I can't even find the post, bro. Uh, anyway, so this should be a pretty exciting show. We've got, um, should, should be nice and smooth for you right now, uh, which is cool. Um, I got a problem with my headphones. Besides that, everything's awesome. It's episode number 34 tonight. We're going to be talking with our guest host, Mr. Chris Teen from Aquadariums in Fairhope, Alabama. And, uh, he's going to be talking about how to build a paludarium. We're going to be doing that tonight so go ahead and do your shares right now share this out let's get a hundred people let's get stoked people let's make this one happen any of the ron cichlid moderators if you're out there tonight uh if you know somehow you guys can band together and coordinate how you guys can one person can get me questions one person so um i tried to do that earlier didn't get much on that so that would be awesome if y'all can do that. I'm going to do what I need to do, my magic on this end, and here we go. So hold on. All right, I got the chat bot all set up. This is going to be a pretty awesome show. This is Paladariums, and Chris Team is one of the experts in the world. He is a author and a contributor to the um, uh, AGA, uh, Garden, American Garden Association. So it's just an awesome dealio going on. I'm going to let this run, let people get on here. Go ahead and share this out. Share this out on your page. Share this out in your groups. If you're an admin or a mod, share it in your group. If you're not an admin or a mod, why don't you contact some of your favorite admin and mod groups and ask them, say, hey, can I share this in there? Or just share it in there. We want to help promote groups on Facebook. I really, really want this to happen. I'm not too sure why. I don't know if it's uh, like, you know, hey, I don't have one. You got one. Let's start this show up. Here we go. Right. I'm going to bring your microphone up. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Dave Gould here. So <laughs> It's been an interesting night. I've been, uh, I was talking about how communication is kind of messed up. I don't know if it's a Mercury retrograde or a moon thing or whatever, but, uh, we were just streaming the first eight minutes of the show on some random Facebook page. <laughs> so that was kind of crazy. Anyway, tonight, uh, today on June 19th, 2019 is the 34th episode of fish talk live. If this is your first show, uh, this this show is designed specifically to uh, have some of the hottest topics in fish keeping, aquaculture, um, and and centered around building a good community of fish keepers. That's around Ron Cichlid's Cichlid Clubhouse. Uh, this platform was built for Ron Cichlids. Ron is a uh, African cichlid breeder down in West Palm Beach, Florida. He's an awesome guy, good friend of mine, and he is a had been. Um, he's getting ready to have surgery and so he's been in a lot of pain and so for the last two weeks uh, last week and this week we have a special guest tonight his name is Mr. Chris Teen uh, like I said he's from Fairhope Alabama he was the reptile manager at the Foley Alabama alligator uh, compound or ranch yeah or play. Right, alligator farm yeah alligator farm uh, he's, he's super knowledgeable about reptiles and, and frogs and all of that and especially um knowledgeable in planted tanks paludariums vivariums we discussed a little bit of that last week anyway um our show's mission is to create a gamified experience for you so we like to give things away we like to do things different this is probably a little different uh than normal most of your facebook lives that you see and uh anyway so let me bring chris on what's going on chris i think we're hey, finally everybody. doing it <laughs> all right 
Yeah. Like you said, my name's Chris Team. I'm the proud owner of Aquadariums. Uh, this is going to be my part two of the series on paladariums and uh, aquascaping. So super excited to be uh, reaching out to y'all. Uh, hopefully y'all will definitely call in at the end of this if y'all have any questions. I know this is a very new topic to a lot of the aquarists out there. So happy to try to answer as many questions as possible. Yeah. Uh, again, this show is not necessarily for us. This show is more for y'all as the hobby. So please don't hesitate to share this, get yeah. the word out. Y'all call in and hopefully we'll get a bunch of questions at the end of the night. Yeah. So every uh, week we usually do some shout outs to our friend. I'm seeing Mr. Jim Stoll, Tasha Dunn. We've got Greg uh, Heater, Matt Jinaliski, uh, Tasha Dunn. Uh, we, see, we just said Joe. Hey, uh, where's Lori, Joe? And then we have Charlie Velinoski, Eddie Lloyd, Char Charles LaBella, uh, Lindsay Banning, that's a friend of mine from high school. Hi, Lindsay. Uh, hopefully, uh, you're still on. She's uh, in California. A real good friend. We used to all hang out together in high school. And, you know, we were the nicest kids. We never got in any trouble. We were always doing. <laughs> anyway, oh, man. just well, kidding. I feel like about to <laughs> uh, yeah, so Cheryl Cooley, uh, Alethea Sowers, nice to see you on there. Hey, Greg, what's up? Hey, you know, while before we start up, before we do that, I'd like to, I wanted to show this last week. This is a, a video here of a, our moderator spotlight. So I'm going to show Greg's right now, if you don't mind, instead of going to the end of the show, like I ha always had. Here we go. So anyway, let's check this out. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our moderator spotlight. Um, I've got a good friend of mine here, uh, Mr. Greg Haste. He's from Science Hill, Kentucky. Uh, he works for the Army Corps of Engineers. He's a pa senior power plant uh, specialist. I think I got that right. And uh, it's just really cool to have him. You, you all know him, Mr. Greg Case. How are you doing, Greg? Doing good, Dave. Doing good. Awesome. So, you know, I decided, I thought, well, let's make a new segment on the show and let's highlight some of the people that help uh, Ron Cichlids, helps the show and gets us going. So anyway, I appreciate you being the first guinea pig. <laughs> No problem. Yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, what, what you, where you from, and what you like to do, and all that kind of stuff. I'm, uh, or like you said before, I'm from Science Hill, Kentucky. Born and raised here. Uh, lived a couple years in Nashville uh, while I was in the uh, training program for my job. Uh, I worked for the Army Corps of Engineers as a senior power plant mechanic. Um, I've did that since uh, 1999. So uh, married, bit, I'm married for uh, 22 years. I uh, have two kids, a uh, four-year-old and a three-year-old. So uh, they uh, they eat up most of my time. But what I got left, I, I farm, I raise uh, beef cattle, and uh, of course keep fish. So uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, and you've got some kids, right? So, um, tell us, tell me a little bit about your children's yellow boy. Uh, yeah, I got a three-year-old uh, son named Lane. So, Lane. you can probably figure out who he's named after. So, uh, one of my favorite singers. So, uh, my daughter, she's four years old. So, uh, her name's Ella Jane, and uh, her. Uh, wide open all the time so <laughs> it's, yeah we waited yep. uh, we was a little waited till we was older to have kids and stuff so that's that's so smart you know uh my wife and i waited five years but 22 to well would you wait 18 years that's awesome yeah yeah it, it's got its uh benefits and drawbacks it's uh i definitely had more energy 10 years ago <laughs> to do what i'm doing now but well, you, you you got two kids in four years, so your energy level must be up a certain level, right? <laughs> well, it, it was anyway. <laughs> yeah. So uh, tell me a little bit about the fish that you got there behind you. What kind of fish are you keeping these days, Greg? Uh, this is uh, my 125, and uh, it's uh, mainly mainly haps, uh, a few peacocks, um, and a uh, feather fin catfish. So there's, I think there's about 21 in there. Uh, the oldest are probably about two and a half years old. Yeah. So, uh, and you have other then, tanks as well. I have a 75 in Buna tank, and uh, 
it, it's pretty simple just some yellow labs and uh, uh, powder blue cichlids and uh, rusty and uh, some manganos so uh, I have a 55 grow out tank and it's full of uh, OB, OBs and uh, yellow labs so yeah yeah and so tell me a little bit about the cows so you, you, like I'm curious, like, you got a 1,000 of them, or you got, like, 50 of them, or what? How does that work? Tell me about uh, it. Yeah, I, they're, they're, I just got 26 head, yeah. so it's, uh, you know, it's a small operation, but. Uh, so, so that's pretty awesome. I really appreciate you willing to do this. Like I said, you're the first one we're doing. Uh, you're the guinea pig, but this gives our viewers just such an awesome chance to get to know the people behind the scenes and get a little bit uh, chance to get to know Greg Haste. And I, I know I appreciate you for everything you do, bro. And it's been awesome becoming friends with you and everything on, on social media and all that. Being from Kentucky, you have to be a basketball player. It's I was just, I was going to say that. <laughs> What are your guys' names? That's awesome. Hey, so thanks for letting me uh, do that, everybody. Uh, Greg Haste, he is. So there, there's about 10 people uh, that are behind the scenes for Ron Cichlid's uh, Facebook groups. It takes about 10 people to moderate. <clears throat> And so I just thought I'd do a different segment, and I wanted to highlight Greg. And thanks a lot, Greg, for doing that. Thanks for meeting up. It was pretty cool. Do you know Greg, uh, Chris? Uh, only through Facebook. Yeah. I've never met him in person. But yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys you guys all might be uh, – I'm confused. I don't know if I – did I show that end cap in this version of the show? Yeah, I did. Okay, so let's go to the show promo. This is what we're talking about today. Super excited. Yeah, yeah, this is going to be great. All right. All right, so this is uh, this is your show. Uh, this is your deal, All right. Chris. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, you want me to play that video first, correct? Yeah, that's correct, that? if you don't mind. Yeah, so it. go ahead, go, jump ahead and tell us about what a paludarium is first while we're watching okay. this video. Mm -hmm. So, paludariums, uh, kind of like what you're seeing here in this video, uh, this was a paludarium that Nick Kinzer and I built uh, back in 2015. Uh, it's one of my uh, personal favorite builds that I've ever had done before. Um, but ultimately, a paludarium is a, an aquarium that is half land and half water, per se. Uh, typically, I like to say that the rules should be somewhere around 30% to 50% water for it to be considered a paludarium. Any more or less, uh, I don't necessarily consider. I mean, there's a few gray areas, but the main thing is it just has to be able to support aquatic life. Um, and so what's cool about this is like right here, like what you're seeing right here on this camera, is you get this perfect slice of nature where you're, you're getting fish with your terrestrial side is like you're if you were out there in the amazon or out there in the jungle to where you just took a slice of the nature where you got both the be able to feature the best of both worlds yeah that's um, awesome so um what you so you last week we discussed this and so we just talked a little bit about it for the newbies that are on today we got a lot of people we're still trying to hit 100 um but today you're going to talk to about what building them yeah, show us. So how yeah, so ultimately I'm just gonna kind of dip our toes in again. Paludariums, I could literally do 40 episodes about how to build a paludarium. Yeah. But this is just more kind of a little bit more in depth. Uh, we kind of lightly touched on it last week, but uh, again, uh, let's go ahead and show that photo right here. This is a good example of what a paludarium is. Uh, this was my buddy up in New uh, in North Carolina. This was his archer fish paludarium. Um, it was really cool. He would actually put live crickets in there and have the archer fish do target practice, knock them in the water and consume them. Uh, but you can see everything about this blends in naturally. So last week we talked about rules of third. Um, so he just, again, you're, when you look at this aquarium, your eyes don't necessarily just focus on the aquatic part or just on the terrestrial part. It's a natural blending of the two to where your eyes have a hard time really focusing just on one thing. And this was an excellent 
an excellently done, well executed uh, paludarium. Let's go ahead and head to the next picture. I'll show you all another good example. This was a little bit smaller of a paludarium, but again, he's got that nice little water feature with some tetras in there uh, with some beautiful moss covered uh, terrascaping done on this one as well. Hey, so, those uh, epistogrammas uh, would look great in there too. Exactly. So, uh, it, so. So you all know, last week, uh, Chris showed up and he brought the coolest little cichlid I've ever seen. One inch, and I get, apparently that's as big as he gets. But um, anyway, so thanks again, Chris, on that. I love yeah, that fish. Yeah, not a problem. Man. Not a problem. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, a piece of ground was one of my favorite fish. They're a nice little dwarf cichlid from South America. Um, tons of different types. So one thing with paludariums, we've kind of talked about the water level, but let's just dive in a little bit more deeper onto what a paludarium is it has to be able to support aquatic life for it to be able to be considered a paludaria. So in essence, you need some type of filtration for your fish to be able to live in a paludaria, whether that be a cancer filter or sump. These are the two <laughs> filtration systems that I would definitely recommend uh, for, for that instance. So here is a double bullnose uh, paludarium that I was kind of building um, for a client up in Ohio. Uh, this is just kind of a snapshot. Y'all may be able to see uh, where I had to use actually five gallon buckets to kind of build the false bottom, but we'll go into that topic next. So first thing is going to be, uh, let's go back to the picture that we had previously, if you don't mind, Dave. Yeah, let's go right here. That works. So when we're talking about building a paludarium, the key things that you need to do is we're going to start from the ground up today. So let's go ahead and dive into aquatic substrate. Uh, to build your aquatic substrate, you've got a vast amount of different things that you can use. Uh, with most of us going to be putting in aquatic plants, I would recommend uh, like a, the fluorite or you can do some pool filter sand. It gives us nice little naturalistic look. And then you can add in pieces of driftwood or larger rockscapes to kind of make this a natural thing, what you're looking at. And then again, if you look at this, a great example of a paludarium. He's got aquatic plants in here. So when you're building your, your paludarium, keep in mind what kind of goal that you're looking to achieve. If you want some taller foreground plants, uh, but ultimately what you're looking for is to try to keep it as naturalistic as possible. Um, so again, this was a well executed. It looks like you maybe use some uh, dwarf hair grass or some. Uh... So what I was thinking, uh, asking you here. So when you're, when you're thinking this out, obviously you want to come up with a plan. Um, you want to think both in terms of terrestrial and aqu aqua plants, right? Because you're going to have a combination yes. of those. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. And again, think about it as if you were out there in the Amazon or out there in the jungles, or maybe like we kind of talked about last week, if you, uh, if there's some freshwater Tanganyikan plants that you could do with some fish, uh, you ultimately kind of want to think about how it would look naturalistically. So when, you're looking at this it just kind of blends in and flows all smoothly and together uh so once you've kind of you've built up your substrate uh you then you go to your you've kind of picked up your aquatic plants the next important thing is going to be building a false bottom uh for your to create that substrate for your terrestrial layer so again here's a great example i use five gallon buckets to be able to support you can see the dirt everything else up on here um, this one right here was a 280 gallon double bull nose that had some, uh, wild discus in there. And, uh, I kind of used some jungle valve to hide the buckets, but this one again was just in the construction phase. And so we'll go ahead and go to this one. This is one of my personal favorites. Um, especially if you're ever having to, if you feel like you're moving a lot, but you want to try a paludarium, this makes a great false bottom substrate layer. These are what is called a hydro clay balls. Now you can find this material through Amazon or through your local hydroponic store. But all it is is pretty much baked clay that's really lightweight. And you just fill up the, the banks. Or another way that you can do this uh, that my buddy Nick Kinzer kind of taught me was that you can create these hydro clay balls, uh, kind of saps per se, uh, using the tool like what your bridesmaids veils are used out of. You can find that in any of your local linen store. And you can tie, tie these down with the hydro clay balls and put some rocks in there to weigh it down because these things are so lightweight, they'll try to float, but you can create some real cool naturalistic slopes like you saw in that video that we had earlier. Uh, so another way in one of the most common ways, probably for a false bottom is Dave, if you want to head on to the next picture, 
is just use an egg crate. Um, so this is egg crate right here. Uh, you can find it at your local hardware store. It comes in four foot by two foot sheets. And then depending on how high your tank is, you can find materials to be able to support it. So in this instance here, I was just using some PVC couplings. As to where earlier you saw on the double bull nose, I was using five gallon buckets. So again, find out what you want to use for your height for these uh, to create this false bottom. But it's very important because what happens is, is if your, your terrestrial substrate stays flooded uh, or stays super damp where it can never properly drain, Maybe you think about like at your household where you got the pots, mm -hmm. your roots are just going to rot and your plants never going to be having a healthy life. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you got to have that air circulation at the bottom, even though there might be water that goes through there, this lifts it up so that there's an air layer. That's correct, awesome. So, it, you know, uh, so keep in mind, tell us a little bit about, uh, before we move on, just cause I'm thinking of things that maybe other people are thinking as well. Um, Generally, it takes a specialized tank or no? Or is it just easier? Uh, I mean, ultimately, the because of the and, pallet bearing, with yeah. you having to use somewhere around 25 to 50% of that space being aquatic, you want a tall space because if you think about it, it's going to be very difficult for you to be using, per se, like a 10 gallon aquarium to be able to support filtration, stuff like this. So, yeah. a lot of times, 24 inches minimum is what I would recommend for as far as height of an aquarium. So a 65 gallon, a 90 gallon, uh, your 110s, your anything that's 30 inches really is perfect. Cause again, that makes it even easier working with the rules of third. You've got 10 inches of water, 20 inches of terrestrial space, and it creates a gorgeous aquascape as far as that goes. And, and there, Dave, I think we- I'm sorry. So what? Oh, I didn't, I, the, um, so there, there are specialized tanks as well. Like Exoterra's make good uh, paludariums, and then Exoterra's and Zumas are starting to come out with smaller scales of these uh, tanks. But uh, one of my favorites that I've had the pleasure of working with so far is definitely Custom Aquariums. Yeah, uh, they're a custom aquarium tank manufacturer that builds paludariums that to any size specification that you may need as well. Um, and so, and then oh. I believe in this one. That's hard for me to tell off of my camera, but. Once you get this egg crate, and we can go ahead and head to the next picture, Dave. Yeah. Uh, the uh, What you want to do, this is just one, again, where I use egg crate to build up to create these uh, different scapes for different levels. Uh, this would be a good way if you were looking to do a waterfall or something like that. You can see the PVC pipe. Um, and there's different ways that you can hide this in your scapes. Uh, we'll get to that here in just a second. But once you've got this what you want to do next because obviously you got these one inch holes so your dirt's just gonna fall right straight through it is you want to put on a window screen a fiberglass window screen you can buy it by the roll for six bucks at lowe's or home depot it's pretty cheap and inexpensive but this allows that dirt to be able to not fall through the gaps but yet you have the structural strength of the egg crate underneath it mm -hmm. to stay solid and firm where you don't have gaps falling through with this the dirt yeah, I'm feeling it. I like this uh, egg crate, like kind of laid out, and I see how the the door screen will hold that dirt in there, but still allow some air to go through and all that. It's great. Yeah, exactly. So, what we got next is backgrounds. So now you've you've got your false bottom, you've got your your aquatic substrate done. We're working our way up. So next is false bottom, or excuse me, is the backgrounds. And so as you can see here, this one is a little bit of both, but mainly. Uh, over here on the right, I'm supporting this background of tree fern uh, panels by just clay. Uh, one of my personal favorites to use because it's natural, but it is a little bit heavier, is sodium bentonite. It's just your common potter's clay that you can buy, uh, but it works really well. And then you just got to find the right mixture of water uh, to be able to have it the right tackiness to support it. Uh, but this works really well in high humidity uh enclosures because what happens is this clay it will it'll begin to dry out it cracks it loses its structural uh support and it will allow your background to crumble uh so if maybe you're you're not too familiar with it or you're not you're not too familiar with high humidity tanks and how to keep the humidity up uh another great option is uh dave we can go ahead to the next picture is the uh is maybe just doing spray foam so great stuff makes the spray foam um that works out pretty well uh, here you can see the can in the background. This is where I'm actually covering up the, the, the spray foam around some cork bark that I pressed into it. 
with a uh, grout. But this again still gives you this really cool, unique, naturalistic look to be able to do a 3D background. And for those of y'all who maybe aren't interested in ever building a paludarium, but you like the looks of your, your custom backgrounds, this is an excellent way to create a fully aquatic 3D background. So, uh, so, just so let's go into this a little bit because I know there's a lot of viewers that get tons of value from this. So this is the spray foam, the expanding foam. Yep. Uh, so you so, bring that in and then what are the next processes? Are you painting that? Are you putting cement on that? What are you, what are you doing here? So you, there's, you can do lots of different things. You can paint it. You can put cement over it. Um, again, keep in mind of maybe your, your pH in your tanks. If you're dealing with a low pH, uh, dwarf cichlids, kind of like what you talked about earlier, you may not want to be using a grout base and you may want to paint it because what's going to happen is you're going to throw off your pH because you've all the lime in the grout and concrete. Yeah. Um, give us a best, couple, give us a couple titles on those paints too. Cause not all, you can't just paint it with anything folks. Uh, so pond shield makes a great two part epoxy. What you're looking for is there's a couple different brands out there, but pond shield is a very more common one. Uh, Joey with, uh, the D DIY King. Uh, that's one of his more popular brands that he uses as well. It's a non-toxic fish safe uh, paint. They come in different colors. Uh, and then as far as what you can do too, is you can go ahead and paint it with just any type of paint. And Pond Shield makes a clear two-part epoxy yeah, cover yeah. and kind of lock in all those toxins as well. Um, but the key is the final coat needs to have something to lock in that's non-toxic yeah. to your fish. So here's uh, a here's a little input on that. Um, <clears throat> I'm not. Sh they don't really make this exact formula anymore. But Krylon makes a paint called Fusion, and you can still find it. You can find it on Amazon, and you, some people that hoarded it and all. But I'm pretty sure they don't make that direct one. But that's a pretty good non-toxic paint. The key to this, everybody, and probably with a lot of this focus in the paludarium, is allow it to cure. So if it says it cures in 24 hours, a paint. Uh, and it's and it's safe for food consumption or fish or whatnot. Uh, let it cure for seven days so that that it's you know all of that um, the it, yeah the aerosol the, the, the aerosol yeah. that gets it on there that evaporates and dries out. So and same thing with a uh, silicone. If you ever like for this piece here, I had a silicone into the background. Those fumes stick around forever. Um, it seems like so. Most importantly, while you're building a paludarium, you've got to have patience. It's not something that you can put together in 24 hours or even in, in seven days and be able to slap animals in it. It's just, it takes time. The materials have to dry properly. Uh, you're uh, like the fumes, everything else like Dave was talk, commenting on too. Um, it's very crucial that we, uh, we definitely give it time uh, to allow everything to settle in. So, yeah, but, yeah. uh, yeah, I mean, you can get more fancier into it with airbrushes, like some of my buddies do at zoos, stuff like that, um, where you can airbrush the paints in. The key thing is though, you got to cover it up with a non-toxic clear, uh, paint. So that, again, that's why I like these two part, uh, epoxies that a uh, pond shield makes. Yeah. Oh, we went and through, so, we went through all yep. the slides. So this is great now. So again, let, let me bring us back up here. We are not teaching a master class. We're not giving you any doctorates in paludariums. But what we're trying to do and what Chris has been doing is to get you excited about a paludarium, to want to try this. To me, it's the coolest thing, but I have an affinity for plants. You know, like uh, when I first got into aquariums and I was talking to people, I said, well, you know, the, I'll probably have a lot of plants. I love plants and I love what you can do. I love the little bonsai um driftwood you know and, and attaching moss on there to make it look like a miniature tree and things like that so yeah so dave let's go ahead and pull up that picture again the first one we we used again and yeah, yeah. we'll go ahead and kind of recap on everything with yeah. this one so again this but my buddy here he used a spray foam background just like we talked about and he covered it uh with silicone and uh with an abg mix uh or atlantic botanical gardens mix um, and then over time, this is what you get. I mean, it didn't happen like this. It didn't look like this from day one. Uh, this picture right here of my buddy's tank, this is actually about 18 months old, but you get this nice lush forest look on that background. And, uh, what's cool is too, is you add texture and depth with the spray foam, um, or even with the clay pushing in natural cork bark or driftwood, which doesn't create just like a, like a kind of like that, uh, that vinyl 
stuff that you can put over the back of the tank, but you actually add depth and an artistic value using this spray foam. Um, and over time, it just looks like a naturalistic slice of nature per se. Yeah. Uh, so this is well executed. You can see over here on the right where he had some stuff come forward on top of his driftwood to really give that depth and feel. Uh, we, again, we talked about on rules of third last week. I didn't really dive into it too much this week because, again, we could sit here and talk hours about how to build a paludarium. But yeah. this is more just an introduction, uh, hopefully piquing people's curiosity and trying to build one. Yeah. Um, so and keep in mind, um, you know, you and I have been rushing around solving some issues and then we've been streaming for 10 minutes on some unknown page. So we got a little discombobulated and I apologize. I know how hard it is to come and, and teach a topic and to be focused on that and have the focus taken away. But talk a little bit about, so the, what's cool about the Paladarian, I just want to hit this home and hopefully this will open up a bunch of conversations with you on your pages and things like that. But you, the stocking of this, so you can have frogs in here and lizards in here and fish in here. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So, I mean, again, keep in mind, ultimately you have to go in with a plan. You can't just start building a paludarium and say, oh man, this looks great. I think I'm going to add a poison dart frog into it because unfortunately a poison dart frog would not be able to live in that beautiful tank that the archer fish were in. He strictly built this paludarium around to be able to make it work for his archer fish. And so that's going to be key is you got to know what you want, what you don't want, come in with a plan of attack and attack that each step you've got to be patient you got to work from the bottom up or the bottom down depending on how you want to look at it but the hardest thing is going to be that false bottom and how to hide that to make it look naturalistic um, for the terrestrial substrate or you could do in the instance like this to where there was no false bottom and he strictly just did a background in the aquarium and focused everything around his archer fish uh, but you can do geckos you can do tree frogs uh, i do a lot of tree frogs geckos poison dart frogs uh, even at the alligator farm, I actually did one with some baby alligators nice. and, uh, infayuma, which is a uh, type of salamander amphibian down here that we have in the, in the South. Uh, there are endless possibilities. You can do it for snakes, pretty much anything. I mean, think about it. A lot of these paludariums have been around. You just maybe didn't know what it was, but you see them a lot at zoos or zoological facilities. Um, it looks really cool. Uh, it's just pretty much creating this naturalistic ecosystem for the animals and you want to kind of use like-minded. So if you have an animal with high humidity plants, obviously planting a cacti and there's not going to be the best situation because it's not going to survive. What about, so, yeah. yeah what, what about um, like fish for food for the animal? So is that ever a, a plan? Like, you know, you have feeder goldfish that are in the aqua part and then there's a terrestrial animal that eats those fish. Is that ever a, yeah. I mean, uh, a couple of people have done it before where they had like some newts or salamanders and yeah. they, uh, they had some neocardian shrimp in there or, uh, some smaller fish that the, the, the newts would try to capture. Yeah. Um, they didn't maybe necessarily succeed all the time, but they still got to do, you got to witness those hunting principles. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, again, the endless possibilities with this, uh, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the more stuff that's going to try to eat the fish needs a lot larger enclosure. So again, think about the space that you've got, look at what you're trying to put in there and then go from there. Um, I've, I've done a lot of different ones for snakes, lizards, uh, all the way down, like I said, to alligators, um, and happy to assist. If y'all ever have any questions again, feel free to go to my Facebook page and I'd be happy to try to give you a most realistic option that you could do. That would be very unique, colorful, but yet practical for the space that you have to do one in. Now I'd imagine that the prices for an aquadarium, just like any aquarium project are going to be from to way up there. But if, but in general, it's, it's relatively cheap. Your exoterra tanks, if you're to get one of those is a couple hundred bucks, same as a tank and one, you know, a 90 gallon tank or whatnot. And then, yeah. and then the filters, you know, it's the same type of thing. You, you know, I know you and I, Chris, we talked about, you know, my exoterra with a Fluvo 205 as a waterfall, you know? Yep. And that's cheap. Uh -huh. You find those 205s for 30, 40 bucks, you know, used. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of upfront cost. However, once it's established and it's going, it's one of the easiest low maintenance aquariums possible that you could have. Um, especially once the plants really get rooted and established, the terrestrial plants, 
because they'll actually will grow their roots into the water, kind of like what a lot of people do with their hydroponic system. And then not only is your filter filtering the water, but now your terrestrial plants are using all that waste from your fish poop and your overfeeding, things of this nature to be natural fertilizer for the terrestrial plants. And so they're acting now as part of your filtration too. Uh, so it's a very forgiving type of an aquarium. Um, like I said, because to be honest, with them, a lot of my clients, uh, it's the perfect tank because I don't, I could literally just go there and do the aquarium maintenance once every uh, couple of months. So it's, uh, once they're fully well and established, they're pretty much, uh, impossible to really kill. <laughs> I don't know what I did here, but I pulled this off. I was trying to do something. Um, let's talk a little bit about aquadarium. So you have a shop here in Fairhope and you deal with uh, aquatic plants, terrestrial plants, uh, frogs, lizards, and fish as well. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. You name it from, uh, from the seas up to the, the canopies, we, we pretty much can cover it. If we don't have it, we can definitely get it in for you. Um, so we can definitely try to accommodate the best thing uh, for what you are looking for uh, to get that done for you. Uh, mm -hmm. We've, I've been around in this hobby uh, since oh, I was about 16. I'm now 30, so I've got almost 15 years of experience. Uh, luckily, my parents were sweet enough to allow me growing up to uh, definitely uh, create some messes in their house. Um, but uh, it's just a huge passion of mine. It's not, I don't really consider it a hobby. It's just a huge passion of mine. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm always excited to talk someone's ears off about how they can do something with their animals. Yeah. So I appreciate you being on. I know Ron does as well. It gives him a, his break while he's trying to sort out his, his surgery and all that. Um, really appreciate you. Now I, I would really like to see our viewers. So our viewers, you know, Ron and I talk about it. They're like family, they're like tribe. You know, there's a good solid people that watch every week and there's a good solid people that watch live and then that don't miss an episode in the, in the, uh, replays, uh, we get rough, yeah. cl close to about 3000 on average replays a week. So, um, I would like to see everybody get behind Chris and help him out. Like, you know, he's so dynamic. He's such an awesome person right now. He's, uh, he's, you know, zoos are after him. You know, <laughs> <laughs> He's got two, he's got two zoos that kind of have him in the mix right now, <laughs> as far as different things. This is a great guy. Uh, we're going to go up and see Aqua Shella this, uh, up in September yeah. and, uh, we're just doing some great stuff. I really appreciate it. One of the ways we can support him and what he's trying to do, uh, we are trying to build an all planted uh, show, which is a lot like this one, but it will obviously this is kind of a prelude to that uh, kind of an aquaculture and maybe called his last name is team. It's spelled T double E M. So a team. So I think we might have like team aquatics or something like that uh, show. Yeah, so, and he's been trying to be, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to talk about it. So this show that we're trying to be doing, we're looking at possibly launching it in August. Uh, if you're ever interested in planted aquariums, the variums, uh, paludariums, we're going to be talking about lighting. We're going to be talking about inhabitants, the animals that you can put in it, the different plants, both terrestrially, aquatically, CO2 systems. I mean, the whole entire shebang. Uh, so, again, if that's something that y'all be looking into, I definitely would love and uh, appreciate the, uh, the following. Uh, we've got one thing that we got coming up. If you want to go ahead and play that. Uh, yeah, we've yeah, got yeah. Uh, flu vault my company is doing a raffle right now for a flu vault fx6 filter now this would be great for your african cichlids tanks or maybe you've got a 110 gallon aquarium laying around at home and you want to use uh maybe this filtration to to maybe filter your paludarium and use a return for a uh, a waterfall this is a great opportunity i think we're down to what 10 or 9 slots left uh, I think it's like 12, but so let me, okay. let me, let me take over here. Cause I really want to say this to the group, the, the loyal people that have been watching Ron and I for the last six months. So we're really trying to help out Chris and Aquadariums. And this is one way you can, these tickets are only $10. Um, I haven't had a chance to talk about it. So if you're new, there's a, something really special that goes on with our, um, uh, it, live chat. You can type in right now star info and it will open up a new message from our page, Fish Talk Live, and it's our information chat service. So it allows you to interact. For one, it will allow you to call into the show. We do love call-ins. We're going to be doing some call-ins here tonight for questions and it, 
there's also a way to access the FX6 raffle. Like I said, there's only 12 spots left. I would like to see this sold out tonight. They're only 10 bucks. It's a $400 value on the filter. I think the, you can find them on Amazon for $339, but still, that is that is still an amazing deal. Even if you bought tw tw two tickets at 20 bucks, uh, 20 bucks for one of the top of the line filters. So I'd really like to see this sell out. We've had it been going for almost two weeks now and it's just about sold out. The proceeds are gonna go towards uh, uh, us putting together the show for uh, Chris and doing all that. So it's super awesome. Um, speaking of Aquashella, this Aquashella is a like EDM dance uh, kind of uh, fish show coming up in Chicago and I wanna run something special here. So Welcome both Ron and I and Chris are all gonna be this there. Is without a doubt an experience, I've never been to a this show. This is Aquashella. I walk around and into these different rooms Artwork, taking pictures and videos of things that I've never seen in 30 years of being in the industry. To see a show of this magnitude bring the two together, fresh water is yes. often the segue to salt water. There are more corals here than other shows that we've been to. Everybody brought this, this revolution of artwork. It brings the, the show to a brand new show. Just give me a try. And I Again, Aquashella is on the chatbot now, and you can uh, type in star info, or you can type in star Aquashella, it will also get you there, and it will take you to the place to get some tickets. So if you, it's in Chicago, one of the coolest cities in the country. If you've never been to Chicago, they're great. Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago has got one of the coolest Mbuna exhibits I've ever seen. Uh, anyway, so yeah, it should be a good time. Like I said, Ron. Y'all come by. I'll be at booth seven oh three, so y'all be feel free yeah. to come by and see me at the booth there for sure. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we are going to take a break, but before we go there, let me let you know if you want to call in. Uh, we certainly uh, would like to um, talk with you if you have any questions. If you want to talk to Chris, just write down that number. Uh, the meeting ID. I, I think I took the password off, so it's just that number and the meeting ID. Like I said, you can hit star info on the chat right now and get a one touch if you're on mobile. It says call in, you push it, boom, it starts dialing your phone and does all sorts of crazy stuff. So let's take a break and take a look at what we've got going on here. We've got some new shirts on Ron Cichlids. All right, so this is from our uh, a moderator that's been working with Ron Cichlids. Uh, big shout out to James Smith and Jeffrey Kirk with ADA. Uh, they got your uh, really awesome rocks right now. This is a little promo, and I just wanted to say thank you, James, for everything that you do for not only Fish Talk Live, but for Ron Cichlids groups as well. and pals in Port Clinton, Ohio. Um, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Ron Demers and the high quality food that's by far some of the best food that I have ever used or have sold in our store. Uh, we used to sell some of your big box uh, name brand foods, which they are some high quality foods, but I'm just gonna tell you now that the quality and results speak for themselves using, using Ron's foods. 
Um, we've quickly converted a lot of our customers from your, your bigger name brand foods to Ron's Cichlid Food Mix. And I know it doesn't look like much on here. We were actually depleted over the weekend. Uh, we put an order in with Ron. He rushed it out to us as quickly as possible. So this will be enough to get us through for the next next couple weeks. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you, Ron. I mean, man, seriously, the, the quality that you put out and the time and the passion that you're putting into your your foods, not only your foods, but your fish and the passion that you have for all of this is by far some of the highest uh, quality. And we as fish keepers and fellow shop owners, thank you very, very much for all of your hard work and dedication. All right, everyone. So if you like these kinds of shows that I produce and create, you're going to love this game show coming up called Tank Boss. Tank Boss is like nothing you've ever seen before. It's basically a game show on social media for fish keeping. What happens is three people are going to come together and they're going to battle with different uh, trivia questions, general knowledge. In the first round, those, those three will battle. Well, only two of them will survive and move on to the next round. And the next rounds are kind of like, you know, uh, Price is Right with the different games and stuff. I got a couple of different formats, which is really cool. One person's going to emerge and go on to the big round, the bonus round, and they're going to win. <clears throat> and they're going to have the right to be called a tank boss. Um, there's three prize levels. If you get selected on the show, you've automatically won uh, the, the third place uh, prize level. Um, all nine tank bosses, we're going to run this for nine months. They're going to come back for the tank boss tournament. So you can sign up for this through the chatbot star info. You'll see uh, the sign up form for tank boss. Here's another show I've got coming up next month. This is a little different. It's not in the fish market, but I did want to throw this in front of y'all. Um, we, I have a, a friend of mine named Dave Alvin out of North Carolina. He's a firewalking instructor. He used to work with uh, Tony Robbins for 20 years. Uh, we have a new show about CBD coming out. You know, CBD is projected to be a 20, uh, 20 billion dollar uh, industry in the, by 2023. So um, we have an opportunity for people to start their own CBD business. So you might want to check this show out. It's going to be uh, on CBD Live. Uh, it's on Sunday mornings. So come check that out. All right, thanks everybody for allowing me to put this stuff in front of you, these advertisements. And uh, we will now take some questions, I guess. So let's bring Chris back. There we go. Hey, everybody. There you are. <laughs> You're not asleep, are you? No. All right. All right. So uh, let me see. I'm, I'm a little disconnected with any sort of questions. Uh, I do have a question here. Uh, Matt Smith is looking for a little bit more feedback on planted refu fru refugiums. Um, you know, obviously, um, you can work with Matt, but if you just want to touch on that, yeah. So uh, just give us Matt, like, I what's your, you yeah? Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. So sorry. No, you're good. So uh, I see that you're asking uh, about feedback on doing a planted refugium for a freshwater system. Uh, I personally don't see why it couldn't work, and uh, the the complications i can see maybe is again the the substrate maybe building up some some of the the more deadlier gases and stuff like that over time but uh i have never personally tried it, it is definitely on my bucket list i've always wanted to try it i just haven't gotten around to trying it yet um my my vision has always been doing like a, a bunch of like moss with some neo shrimp or something like that living in there uh you know it makes sense as far as that. But again, when we're talking about as far as paludariums go, once those roots hit the water, it's crazy. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find any pictures just to show you how much of the roots actually go in to the water. But basically, those terrestrial plants, once they hit the water, are acting as a refugium already inside the, the t upper part of your tank. Yeah. Um, but it is definitely possible. I don't see why logically you couldn't do a freshwater refugium. Yeah, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, just haven't gotten around to doing one yet. Yeah, yeah. So the refugium, everybody, is that you know, with our heavily plant or heavily stocked African cichlid tanks, nitrates are always an issue that we're dealing with, and so we look for ways. Um, the The real deal is chemical um, additives for removing nitrates don't really work. If they do work, 
well, I don't want to say that, but they don't work that well. And if they do work, they work for like maybe one week and then they're exhausted. So getting plants in there is one of the best ways to remove nitrates. Now, African cichlids are not real plant friendly fish. <laughs> they like to tear them up and do all that stuff. So, and then there's certain species that don't like to live at that high pH range. So we're looking at Anubias and things like that. So the refugium, if you have a sump would be awesome. That's where you grow plants out of the top of your sump and things like that. Yeah. So for African cichlid tank, Anubias or Java firm would be probably the two I would put, yeah. definitely push hard yeah, if you're yeah. wanting to look at doing a refugium because they can tolerate that hardness and the upper pH so well. Yeah, yeah. So we don't have any callers calling in. That's too bad. I was going to give away 25 grand to uh, callers, each caller that was coming in. But, you know, whatever. I, I've got other shows I can give money away on, so it's all good. <laughs> Anyhow, so, um, yeah, we do reward people that call in, um, but we can just move on from Did here. Did we have another question? No. I think I saw no. someone was asking about the buckets no. or something. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, someone was asking, oh yeah, there is a question. Cheryl Coley was asking about, are the buckets empty? Yeah. So, uh, the buckets were not empty. Uh, again, talking about these gases as they build up over time, uh, you think about those five gallon buckets are also going to try to float. Uh, so I purposely drilled holes through it so water could easily pass through, but also the gases didn't build up to where if it ever did tilt over and release those gases, you get a huge methane boom and your tank and you just killed everything in your aquarium. Uh, so even with my PVC coupling, stuff like that, I always drill holes through it to allow water to pass through easily through it. And it also kind of helps eliminate the, the flotation levels of the PVC or the buckets as well. Um, but you gotta have a pretty big tank if you're ever gonna try to do a five gallon bucket. Uh, yeah, if yeah. you got a tank like that, I'm definitely envious of you. I wish I had one in my own personal space. Yeah. Um, but sadly, I've only done one tank where I've had to actually use a five gallon bucket to do the, the uh, terrestrial for, yeah, you know, yeah. stuff straight. Well, and, and of course, you can build that stuff out with very large driftwood and rocks and all that. I think what you're getting away from is the weight on that, right? You don't want yeah, 600 I mean, pounds uh, of rocks the, in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, rocks also add weight to the thing so again the false bottoms is trying to help out you don't want to necessarily fill up a tank with a you know 200 pounds of pea gravel to get build up your false bottom um because you're already you got to think about the structural load of your aquarium how much weight it can support how much can you stand support um so these are just cheap easier lightweight ways to be able to provide the structural stability but yet at a you know the weight factor definitely kicks in yeah so yeah. all right so um i really was giving away some stuff for the call in uh but it doesn't look like that went on but you know sometimes it happens people get busy hey um let me uh let's go ahead and just get start giving some stuff away hey just because it's chris filling in this is still fish talk live with ron demers and ron still authorized us to go ahead and give away some cool stuff and do all that sorry we missed you caller <laughs> um uh -huh. yeah Let's see. I can bring him in here in a second. Ah, let's bring him in. Let's see. What's up, caller? Let me unmute you. Hey, caller, where are you calling from, and uh, what's your name? TA, and it's Missy. Hey, hey Missy, what's going on? <laughs> hey, Missy, how are you doing? Doing good. All right. Good to hear that. For so you got a question for us today? Yeah, for doing a... Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce the word for doing a, yes, okay. for doing a paludarium. What do you do to separate if you just want to do a half and half? Okay. Um, so kind of, kind of like if you remember that slideshow, maybe Dave could pull it up again. Maybe not. I'm not sure how difficult that would be. It won't. It won't. Easiest way to do it is with the egg crate. Um, Dave, remember that picture with the egg crate where we had the, I was showing the different tiers. Yeah, let's, um, let's get that there. So easiest way to do that is definitely going to be probably using egg crate um, because you don't want to have glass or solid baffle um, in between it. So what you can do with this egg crate is once you get it kind of built up like this, the easiest way to use to cover this up is spray foam. Um, so you, you can kind of create like a really cool rocks feature of like where the terrestrial part is going down into the water 
Um, that's the easiest way though, where you could do a half and half, but where you could still kind of keep that naturalistic um, look to it. And again, don't work with straight lines. Try to, you know, maybe go at an angle, a 45 degree angle instead of a 90 degree angle. Um, just it's a little bit more appealing to the eye and overall you'll get a lot nicer look of, in your aquarium. But egg crate would probably be the easiest way to achieve a half and half. And again, spray foam it, covering it up with something to achieve that look would definitely become important. Would it still get wet where it's half dry land? If you if you have it up high enough, it shouldn't be. So uh, again, think about where you want to have your your aquatic level to be, and make sure that you're building your terrestrial substrate uh, about three to four inches taller than that. Um, yeah. So to where the bottom of your substrate is, not necessarily your top of your substrate, but the bottom of your substrate. Okay. Is. Now, so, pal paludariums uh, really thrive in extremely high humidity. Or is that correct? You want yeah, I mean, for a lot of mine that I do, yes. Yeah. Uh, they, they thrive pretty much anyway. Again, last week I talked about where I did some day geckos to where they stayed around 40 to 50%. Um, you just, See, again, that's what I'm thinking think, about it for as a gecko. Yeah, yeah. So some geckos, like the ones I use in my tanks come from South America and they like 60 to 80% humidity. Some of the geckos like a lot drier, more arid humidity. So depending on what species gecko you're at, I would look at, pick that one, go from there, look at the requirements humidity wise, and then base your, your plants around that. Um, your, your aquatic plants, you can, no matter if you got a, a, you know, you could technically do a leopard gecko in a desert arid, uh, environment with still having tetras and stuff like that underneath it. But, uh, you need it for your terrestrial plants. You need to look at the requirements of your inhabitants and then go based off of fine plants that will work with the humidity range that they need. Yeah. So, uh, you know what I think? He, well, oh, there we lost Chris. Hello? Oh, I'm still here. Uh, Hello. Uh, hey, you know what I think we, you need, Missy, is you need a, a Ron Cichlid girl shirt. Like, did you see the girl shirt promo? Yes, I have seen them. <laughs> yeah. So, so let's uh, send you out a Ron Cichlid girl shirt. I'll make sure that happens. Uh, we've already got your info from before. We're just going to need the size, and we'll just keep that private and when, in a private message, and we'll get it out to you. Appreciate okay. you calling, Thank you. girl. Awesome. Well, thank you for calling in, Missy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Now, we have um, two girls, I, Mindy and Missy. So sometimes I get them mixed up in my head. <clears throat> but Missy, so uh, I'm writing that down real quick. We got Missy on there. Let's go ahead and give some stuff away. What do you say? Before we do that, let's look at um, just, just know that uh, Ron Cichlids is a social platform. Uh, you can find him on Instagram at Ron's underscore cichlids and on Twitter at Rondemer6. So go ahead and reach out to him that way. Let's build up those platforms as well. Before we go into giving that away, let's just look at what the member fish of the week, tank of the week. Uh, first one here is Mr. Bob Johnson. We appreciate you sending that video in. And I don't, okay, so as many of you know, I'm not a total expert. I know a lot of them. I'm pretty sure those are Madoka with white lips. Caps there. Can you see them, Chris? Yeah, I can see those. Yeah, um, yeah. beautiful. I'm, I'm not an African guy, so yeah, that's, yeah. that's like it's, a foreign language to me. Yeah, it's a really beautiful fish. I like the the um, subtleness in the substrate. Um, nice little colony there. And then also we have Mr. Charlie Labella. I appreciate you working through the video issues earlier, Charlie. Tank's looking great. You got it's, uh, a lot of nice. Uh, you got OB Peacock there. Your yellow Blaze is just posted up right there. He's like, look at me. It looks like you have a, uh, oh, that looks like a Buco Nutania at the top coming at us. Uh, but anyway, lots of nice fish on there. Thank you guys for doing that. Um, let's just go ahead and do this. All right, let's spin the wheel to win. Yeah, yeah. song makes me want to dance which is kind of goofy all right guys so this is what we do every week we have the spin to win wheel now you let me uh, take the moment here to talk about why we asked for these hundred viewers on the live show um because the spin to win wheel has a ton of different prizes on there. You can win all sorts of stuff. In general, there's one or two grand prizes, which is a large fish right off of Ron Cichlid's uh, shop. Um, when we hit 100, we bypass the spinning part. 
So we just automatically pick someone and say, you go to the shop and you pick out some fish. So that's one way that Ron Cichlids and Ron Demers has been giving back to the Facebook fish keeping community for the last six months. And we just really want to thank Ron for all of the efforts that he does there and all that. We are going to pick some people for Spin to Win. We're going to pick two people here. Uh, I just want to mention that on the new wheel, we've got four slots for fish. So it's a big deal. And also there is a $100 spot from Chris team in Aquadariums for a $100 gift card. The um, hashtag for today, I'm going to play this music. And while this music's playing, it gives everybody a chance to put it in there. I want to know, are you guys ready to win? Like, I want to see some people say that, that they're still on this show and they're here for this and they're ready to do this. The hashtag, I'm waiting for it to come in front of me here. It's coming up. Is going to be, I just might as well open it up because I can't wait for that long save. Okay, the hashtag is going to be spin to win. So it's hashtag spin to win. You've got during this song to put it in there. Hashtag spin to win. You can see it right there on the screen in front of you. It's a pound symbol with spin to win. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Hashtag spin to win. You want to win? But you have you have a one in five chance of winning a large fish today because we added more to the wheel. I'm pulling up our gaming software here on the back end, making sure we're on there. Whoa, we only have 62 reactions on this post today, Chris. Maybe we, need to, maybe we need to pull a winner off of that. It gives somebody really good odds. The reaction is if you like the show while it's playing, if you like it or if you give it a heart or even a sad face. I don't know why we'd make it sad, but those are the reactions. I think I'm going to do that. Give those 62 people. Just bless them. Now, you have to be on the show in order to win, so... Don't put, don't put the winning uh, hashtag in there and then take off. <laughs> spin to win, everybody. It's all one word. Spin to win. James Travizino, Travizano. It's all one word. Spin to win. Help you out there, bro. Got you back. I'm going to put my hashtag in there. I want to win. Spin right, all right, to win. Yeah, there's my hashtag. Spin to win. All right. So let's go All ahead right. and pull this up. Let me, uh, all right, let's see here. Here I am. Here's I'm the floating head on the bottom right. <laughs> How's it going, everyone? <laughs> uh, for some reason, it's not, they've, okay, so here's my biggest pet peeve in the world. Here it comes, is that platforms change the way they are, and they never tell you. So you set things up, and then they change it, see? So obviously, let's go there. Still only 62 reactions on today's post. You can see it there at the top. Let me just pull that down there. So you see how I do this. I got posts and it tells me right here. And then it tells me right here uh, how many reactions. Um, so I'm still only looking at those amount of reactions. So I'm going to go ahead and say right there, you see that green button that says pick a winner. So I'm going to do that. The very first thing I do is what I call clearing out the system so that it's pretty much random in what it's doing so there's that this first one when i say pick a winner is not going to be the winner okay so let me just so can i give you a shout out while we're getting this up and running absolutely man i appreciate All that right. So uh, one thing uh, over this past two weeks working with uh, Fish Talk Live is I've gotten to see a lot of behind the scenes that Dave Gould does for y'all. And this man, I don't know how he does it. If y'all could see, he literally has about four to five screens counting his iPad and phone out in front of him. He's got stuff moving from screen to screen. This man literally puts in eight to ten hours on the show just to produce one episode. So uh, y'all be sure to give him a big <laughs> shout out too. We appreciate all that you do. Yeah, I appreciate you, Chris, for saying that. That's awesome. All right, so for those that have reacted on this post, uh, there is your winner right here. Let's see. 
Let's do this. I'm going to pick this winner right now. And this is on the reactors right here. All right. And that winner is one of our new mods. Let me pull this up. Congratulations to Kelly Nyberg. You are going to be spinning the spinning the wheel tonight now. So we, and there's a lot that goes on the back end. So like he said, I do a lot of work. Ron puts a lot of work. Chris, these last two weeks, you put a lot of work into it. Um, our moderators do as well. And so we like to, uh, any sort of giveaways, our moderators are eligible and we, we ask them to, to join and do all that. So thank you, Kaylee as uh, Nyberg. You're going to be spinning the wheel. And let's go ahead and go with the, um, the chat bot as well. I really want to see someone win some fish while Ron's gone. Yeah. So, uh, when you hit, let me explain this. When you hit star info, okay, what happens is it opens up a messenger with our page. And when you do that, it asks you to subscribe and you subscribe to it. We don't spam. We put out, I think, one message. Sometimes they're long messages, big deal. Uh, but what are we trying to do? We're trying to get you on the show so we can give you free stuff. So what's the big deal, right? Um, in that, uh, I put out a secret uh, chat uh, for a giveaway and this is for a pound of food and uh, that one is for we ask people to tell us what the genus of haplochromine cichlids are the the genus for um for peacock another name for it, and that's alan okara okay so i'm going to pull it out here i can see a lot of people tried to do it but don't know how to spell it but we actually have to go by the Proper spelling, which is A-U-L-O-N-O-C-A-R-A, -O -O Gallon Akara. And that, that person is going to be this person right here. And let me just make sure everybody's seeing this. Okay. So Lori Venker, uh, you haven't won in a while. Lori, congratulations. It's an all-girl thing going on right now. All right, girl yeah. power tonight. Yep, so Lori uh, won a pound of food of her choice. That was what that one was. And then we have one more. And that is our spin to win. So let's pick that one. You can see there, I just selected it. And it's spin to win. I can see people tried to spell that one as well. There we go. Yeah, I saw you, you misspelled that one too. Did I? <laughs> well, let me hurry quick and put it in there. <laughs> let's see. Is it going to be all girl night tonight? All right. Let, oh, I got drum rolls, by the way. Here we go. And that is our friend, Mr. James Smith. So awesome. Congratulations, right. James. You are also spinning tonight. So, Lori Venker, you've got a pound of food of your choice. Kaylee Nyberg and James Smith are going to be spinning tonight. So, let's go ahead and bring up the spin to win wheel. There it was just a second ago. Uh, this one's going to be for Kaylee first. Um, I happen to know that both of these people are online. <laughs> And uh, we're going to go ahead and go with it. So why don't you be my picker? Um, first off, let's, I'll go ahead and choose the time. So let me go ahead and go here. Um, I'm going to say let it spin for 12 seconds. And then you tell me a color and then where its location is and then where do we want to start it from. All so go right. Ahead. Let's do the red at the 1 o'clock. Okay. And then bring it to where? We're going to bring that to the 4 o'clock. Okay. So, hold, hold on a second. I'm making sure I got the right one here. It's about right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just making sure that. Oh. Actually, hold on a second. <clears throat> hold on, everyone. I I have the wrong wheel. I wanted to make sure that that wheel with fish on it was right. So, let's bring us back here. Okay, let me go. Hey, everyone again. Yeah, you know how bad my eyes are. So <clears throat> some weeks I have really, really bad eyes, and that so you got to bear with me. That's what's the delays here. So let's see. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead while he's looking at that, guys. Go ahead if you're not a fan of Ron Dimmer's Facebook groups. Go ahead and be sure to like those groups. He's got. Uh, amazing tank showcase he's got out there ron denver cichlid club uh i believe there's a mbuna club as well is that correct dave yep that's uh, right the mbuna so, 
Y'all be sure to fill. I think he's got four or five groups out there. Be sure to go out there and like. Uh, he does a lot of cool stuff, interactions out there as well. He's, he loves to give away stuff, so you definitely don't want to miss out on those opportunities to possibly win some free stuff as well out there on his Facebook groups. All right, so what I had, to, what I was doing here, everybody, uh, nothing's, nothing, I'm, I'm making it better is what I'm doing. So I'm applying those changes. I'm going to bring the wheel back. Here we go. I'm sure everybody's just sitting on the edge of their seat. Now on that wheel, there's four winners for fish, and there's that $100 gift card. We're going to take number one red, and we're going to bring that right there into number four. Good luck, Kaylee. This is for you. There it goes. And here we go. You are the winner of $50 off over $100. All Excuse right. me, $20 off, off over $100. So I marked that down for you. Congratulations, Kaylee. Here we go for uh, Mr. James Smith. So let's do the same thing for James. Uh, go ahead and um, let me refresh. Let me also save this. Yep. Okay. So give me a color, give me a position, and then give me also, uh, um, the, yeah, the color and the position, the new position. All right. Let's, yep. let's see here. I can't, I see the, the screen. I can't see the wheel. Oh, sorry. Hold on. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, there we go. All right. There's the wheel. All right. Let's do aquadarium green at, 10 o'clock yeah and let's move that to the three o'clock position okay so it's this lighter green right there yep uh best of luck to you james come on big money come on big money let's see what we got He got 15% off an order. Uh, we generally reward the uh, moderators with a discount already. So um, we're going to go ahead and make that something better for you, James. Let's spin it again for him. Let's give him All one right. more chance. Fish, box, fish, box, fish, box. Fish, fish, fish. There it is. Oh, most. Oh. Oh, we got you an API test kit, James. Uh, we'll send that out to you. Hey, um, so there's a new way of collecting if you're a winner. Uh, that's activating the chat bot, going into the Fish Talk Live uh, Messenger, using the menu. It says claim prize. We need people to go through that. It's going to ask you questions. Say, what's your address? You put your street address in. Do you have an apartment? No, yes, whatever. City, all of that. It's going to ask you to like both the pages. We need you to like those pages and all of that. Oops, I didn't have the wheel sent over. I don't know what's going on with like a full moon, but there it is. That's your proof, James. There's the API test kit. Um, let's bring us back here. And awesome talk tonight, uh, Chris. Thank you so much for filling in. Uh, normally, um, Ron would call in and whatnot, but you know how it is. We love you, bro. Appreciate you doing this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I saw him earlier he was up in uh, South Carolina with no service. So, yeah. but uh, I'm always happy to be on here. Thank you all again. Uh, as uh, being a viewer of y'all's show, I'm definitely honored to be on here and give some presentations for y'all. So happy to do it again. Yeah. So, hey, everybody, reach out and give a like to Aquadarium's page at the very minimum. Once the show's over, just go over there, give him a like to help him build his stuff out. If you want an FX6 and you want one cheap, uh, it's $10, six, 65 spots. What, what we're doing is giving five of those away. So yep. um, two are going to uh, people that sign up for free raffle tickets. Two are going to people that purchase raffle tickets. And one is going to be picked like kind of what I did here. WooCommerce, we're going to find a, a post. And we're just going to pick somebody that liked or commented on a post. So those five tickets are going to be given away. Um, that it also supports him and what he's doing and, and his platform and all that. We appreciate everybody. Uh, next week, Ron is going to be back. Um, uh, we no, don't we don't know his condition yet. Mug anymore. Yeah, we don't know his condition. 
Uh, but he will be back and, uh, hopefully all that stuff's getting straight out. Not sure what the topic is. We usually pick that after these ones, but uh, we'll get, we'll be getting back into more aquarium topics next week. Um, it's looking like for the most part, Wednesdays are the best one. So if you are loyal Tuesday fish talk live fans and you're still here on Wednesday, thank you so much. Uh, we are going to be doing this on my, uh, Wednesdays, uh, I sometimes get confused with standard time and daylight time. So if I say it's, <laughs> it's standard time during daylight time, I usually mean the, whatever it is. So it's 8 p.m. on Eastern time, 7 p.m. Central, of course, 6 o'clock in the mountains and 5 o'clock on the left coast. So we appreciate you doing this. We appreciate you being here. Uh, like every time I have a little video on the end and you're not going to want to miss this one after the closing. Thanks, Chris. I'm going to give you the final word before we're out, bro. All right. Thank you all again. Y'all be sure to, uh, if y'all have any questions, feel free to reach me out to my company page. Thank you all again for hosting me. I've been very honored. I uh, love to get to know some of y'all. So I look forward to seeing y'all again soon. Awesome. So who's ever seen a Nile crocodile <laughs> with African cichlids? I think this might be that zoo in Chicago. It, the tank itself looks like the zoo, but I've never seen a crocodile in there. So How crazy is that? Yeah, yeah. Someone was saying, they, they go, oh, it's a fake crocodile. That crocodile's not fake. Crocodile for sure. Makes sense. I mean, they probably would have some uh, saltwater or Nile crocodiles down there, like Tanganyikan and stuff. Mm -hmm. I would think. All right, dude.